from the Institute for the Advancement of Cognitive Education. These are powerful podcasts, conversations with scholars, authors, and professionals, cutting-edge resources, helping you to enhance better thinking and learning. Before we start this podcast, the Institute for the Advancement of Cognitive Education would like to thank you for your support during 2019. Our latest data indicates a significant increase in the number of unique visitors to our website and a steady statistical increase on our social media pages. We would like to encourage you to share our free resources with those whom you think might find it helpful. We pray that God will bless you richly during 2020 and that you will be filled with new hope for the future. Good day. Our guest today is Dr. Stef Esterheisen. She's a senior lecturer at the Northwest University in South Africa. And in that regard, she is a program leader of the Foundation Phase program at the Northwest University. She has been a teacher for more than 20 years before she joined the Northwest University in 2005. She delivered several national and international papers at conferences and she is well published. She's also well versed and educated in thinking maps, habits of mind, six bricks, innovative teaching strategies, theories of potential. And she has been involved in various research projects such as schools as thinking communities, high performance learning. And she is currently involved in a project called Buffenier Project, Early Childhood Care and Education, the Holistic Development of Young Children. Uh, Dr. Esterheisen is an expert on play-based learning, and she believes that children can achieve their maximum potential through play-based learning. She focuses on the improvement of teaching and learning practices of prospective teachers and caregivers to enhance cognitive development of children from birth to nine years old. And she's a strong believer that cognitive skills can be attained through play from a very young age. Dr. Esterheisen, you are so welcome here. Thank you so much, Bibi, for the opportunity. And good day to the listeners as well. Now, I'm going to take the liberty to address you as Steph. Is that is fine with you? It is fine with me. Thank you. So what is play? Can you explain to our listeners and break open the concept of play? Literature all over defines play as an extremely enjoyable, spontaneous, creative and biological action that both humans and animals engage in. Uh, it is a natural and significant way in which learning takes place. And play holds enormous benefits for children uh, because it is regarded as the highest level of child development. And research proves that play establishes complex neural pathways in the developing brain. Now, I just want to pause you there. I mean, this is a very interesting statement that you are make because I think generally we think play is just something that children do to pass time. And so what you are saying is that play is extremely important for cognitive development. Yes, definitely so. And that's why it is so important to educate parents and caregivers and teachers how to plan play and also how to observe unplanned or free play. Right, so in essence what you are saying is that we have to start to take play very seriously if we are serious about the development and learning of our children. Definitely, be a yes. Now can you explain a little bit more about how play and learning can be integrated? Did you know that an individual will never learn as fast and as much as the first eight years of his or her life. And during these years, the foundation of cognitive skills, socio-emotional competence, and sound physical and mental health are laid. In the first thousand 
thousand days of a baby's life, adequate stimulation creates neural connections at a pace of up to one million per second. A loving, nurturing, safe environment where this baby is exposed to responsive and playful care, foster bonding and secure attachment that contribute to positive socio-emotional development. This is the perfect scene in which to raise a child. So if we look at play-based learning, we should look at the purpose of it. And the main purpose of play-based learning is to motivate, stimulate, and support children's holistic development of skills, concepts, language acquisition, communication, concentration, and memory. You know that children remember best if they are actively involved. And through play-based learning, children have the opportunity to engage in real-life situations and imaginary activities which challenge their thinking. It empowers children to take ownership and responsibility for their own learning as they become more curious to explore new things. And this desire of them to explore and investigate gives them a sense of identity. Steph, thank you very much. Um, in your blog, you refer to three distinct age categories if we look at play-based learning. Would you be willing just to briefly highlight what are those age-based categories and what are the important developmental aspects that parents and teachers must focus on? From conception to the age of two, but to also talk about it as the first thousand days, adequate stimulation forms neural connections at a pace of up to one million per second. A loving, nurturing, and safe environment where the baby is exposed to responsive and playful care, foster bonding and secure attachment that contribute to positive social-emotional development. And this is the perfect scene in which to raise a baby. And I think that's so important for parents to hear because oftentimes we think as parents if we just provide nurture and care and love and play with our babies that doesn't have anything to do with cognitive development but what you are saying is that those are the foundation and the building blocks of neurological connections and cognitive development. Is that right? That is definitely true, yes. The next phase is then the three to five year age or the preschool phase. Now during this time, language and social, emotional and cognitive skills rapidly expand. During these years, playful stimulation and learning by means of play, reading, singing and interaction with peers and adults are essential because it enables children to make sense of their world and use and develop their language, their numerical and scientific awareness, imagination and creativity. And so this means that parents that are serious about the cognitive development of their children must sing songs with them, they must read little books for them, they must play with them, they must allow their children to engage in imaginary play and dress up and um, you know all of those are very important activities although it might seem insignificant very important activities for cognitive development. Absolutely and you know what dear Pierre, it doesn't take a lot of time just by involving your child in your everyday actions will develop that. For example, if I can take a mother baking a cake, during that caking and baking process, the mother can ask the, the child to join her. And during that uh, process, she can teach the child correct concepts, such as liters of milk or brands of flour. The loving and the 
bonding that takes place is so important for the child. It builds self-confidence and the child feels happy and safe in that environment. The mother can tell the child about the degrees in the oven and uh, degrees of Celsius and in how long the cake must be in the oven and to decorate the cake, etc. So that simple situation, even not baking a cake, just preparing food is a valuable time to install very important skills and dispositions in your child. And I think what's important, what you highlight here, is that all of this can happen in a very natural way and in a very natural setting in the house. Yes, definitely, absolutely. Or in the garden, or during excursions, uh, or while they are traveling to the sea. All of these are situations in which the parents can develop these imperative skills in a child. Steph, what about little older children, six to eight years old? The six to eight year old children, during that time, formal education in South Africa takes place where they go to a primary school. And then all of the above mentioned, actually, as from conception through the preschool phase, was the foundation uh, where the skills are further advanced during this phase through active play-based learning by transforming the educational experiences and strengthen learning motivation and outcomes and it's so important in a stress-free learning environment and i think that's so important what you highlight is that the educational environment needs to be encouraging it needs to be caring it needs to build the self-esteem of children and it yes. must be nice and fun. We must develop in, during that stage a love of learning in children. Absolutely. The children must enjoy being at school or learning. So, Steph, what is play-based learning? Right. Play-based learning, if we look at the main purpose of play-based learning, it is to motivate, stimulate, and support children's holistic development of skills, their concepts, knowledge building, language acquisition, communication, concentration, and memory. It is very important to involve children actively in the learning process because they remember best if they are actively involved. Through play-based learning, children have the opportunity to engage in real life situations and imaginary activities which challenge their thinking. It empowers children to take ownership and responsibility for their own learning as they become more curious to explore new things. And this desire of them to explore and learn about new things give them a sense of identity. Children not only learn how to solve problems through play-based learning, they also learn how to think critically. It enhances their vocabulary and sentence structure. They develop number and scientific skills. They learn about things like comparison, categorization, adding, subtraction, they learn how to use the correct concepts. It improves their creativity and their imagination. And a self-image is very important in the learning situation. Play, develop a positive self-image, self-confidence. When play-based learning takes place in a loving, caring, non-threatening, environment where they do not have to fear failure. Right. Can you give us an example, a practical example that might unfold in a household? An example can be when the father is working in the garden and Mumpo asks his father, what are you doing? And then the father 
states that he's making vegetable garden and he invites Mpo to help him. And now together the two of them choose, making choices, making decisions, which vegetable seedlings or small plants have to be planted where. Then they prepare the ground and the father explained to Mpo how to prepare the ground and the soil and what is important before planting seeds. Then they will make rows in which they will plant the various vegetables and that is categorization. And during this whole experience, Mpo bonds with his father. He learns about various vegetables, concept building, knowledge building. They are planning together. They count how many vegetables will fit in a row. They will count how many rows of vegetables are there all together. Um, how deep the seedlings or small the plants should be planted. And the father could tell him about the different types of sand. Which type of sand is the best for the vegetables? How much water should be used? Um, how many times a week should it be watered? It will be very good if the father asks Mupo to make a graph to follow the growth of the plants and in the end enjoy food with his family, which has been provided by him and his father. If you look at this scenario, extremely important skills were learned. It was a relaxed, loving, safe, stress-free environment. He learned language, vocabulary mathematics, life skills, even without knowing that he is learning. He learned about planning, organization, problem solving, thinking the skills were definitely enhanced here, and Mupo discovered, he created, he imagined. His father helped him to build new understanding and to expand his thinking. He will definitely go to school and tell his friends and his teacher about this experience. Steph, what is so encouraging, what you're sharing is not difficult. I mean, any parent can do that. And I think if there's one message that I want to convey to parents is that they must realize that the best curriculum that they can give their children is themselves. And yes just to be involved in the lives of the children and to involve children in their lives and convey their knowledge and experiences to children in a loving, caring and a natural way. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can you open up to us a little bit more? What do you believe are the important characteristics of play-based learning? Characteristics of play-based learning, they are actually five. Enjoyment is the first one, then meaning. Uh, during play, the child understands his world, so meaning is created. Engagement, he is involved, he is busy with, with something, engagement. Inferential thinking or making deductions and using hypotheses is another characteristic. Then, of course, social interactions, which is very important for the child development. I want to take the liberty to pause here and there some of the characteristics of play-based yes. learning, just to make it practical for our listeners. So if we talk about meaning, what comes to my mind is one could ask the child, why is this important to water the garden or... Um, to have vegetables, to plant vegetables, why is this important in life to have that? What does that mean in terms of our holistic well-being as humans? And that can open up a wonderful conversation. Some other thoughts that I had on inferential thinking, that might be a difficult term for our listeners. An easy question to ask is, what if we don't water the garden? What will happen? I don't know if you can think of other questions that could help us practically implement these aspects. Yes, for, uh, that is right, uh, Bia Bia. What will happen if we do not water the vegetables? 
what will happen if farmers do not plant vegetables or crops for the country? Why is it important to have vegetables? That's right, and it also provides an opportunity for parents to bridge it to other contexts, to ask the question, where else in life have you yes. seen people plant food and water it? Some children think that vegetables come from spa or pick and pie, or yeah. they don't realize that it must actually be planted and looked after. And so lastly, I just want to highlight the aspect of enjoyment. I think that's so important. Yes. It must be fun. Learning must be fun and it can be fun. Yes, uh, the child should have a positive emotion when thinking of play and learning. He should find pleasure and thrill when playing and learning. So Steph, if we really implement play-based learning effectively, what do you believe are some of the benefits that we will start to see in our children? Play shapes the structural design of the brain and it makes it more flexible. During play, imperative perceptual skills necessary for successful learning are enhanced and children receive opportunities to play and communicate with others, to listen with empathy, and as they become aware of and explore that other people might have another point of view. We develop social competence, build relationships. Children learn how to resolve conflicts, which is so important in life nowadays. How to negotiate. Play-based learning regulates a child's behavior. Important, the children experience happiness and acceptance. It gives them courage, positive self-image. It creates curiosity, cause and effect in the end self-reflection, which is a very important skill to have in life. It helps the child to take risks, to look for alternatives, to investigate, to question, to persevere, to be creative. And also, it enhances memory skills. Steph, thank you very much. I want to take it a little bit further and ask, how do you think this can lead to real deep learning? If we can take an example of shapes. Children know about a circle and a square, a triangle, a, a rectangle, etc. And um, when you introduce another kind of shape, like, for example, a hexagon. The children will be definitely interested because it's a different shape. And when the teacher or the parent introduce now the, the shape, let the child touch it and, and smells it. Some of them will even taste it. Let them look at it and tell you about what they see. There's different colors, so, you know, it can be red, blue, green, orange. Let the child discover it has six sides and six angles, for example. Now let the child build some plays with this shape. He can draw it, he can color it, and he can even make it out of Play-Doh. Mm. And I think by this time, he will really know the characteristics of a hexagon. But as he grows older, he can connect this factual knowledge with real life experiences. When he discovers that hexagons are very useful shapes in nature. For example, this six sided shapes fit together perfectly and leave no gap in the honeycomb. And very interesting to know is that this specific hexagon used the least amount of wax to hold the most weight of honey. Isn't that wonderful? I've got um, a concern and that is oftentimes parents and I think teachers unfortunately in some educational context believe that we must overload our children with more and more academic work and if we don't do that 
we're going to hamper the future of our children, we're going to disadvantage them. While in fact, the opposite is true, you know, if we allow space where they can play, they will have ample opportunity to develop cognitively in ways that we can just imagine. Would you like yes. just to elaborate a bit on that? Yes, Debbie, unfortunately nowadays parents are anxious and expect more from their children's performance academically, uh, on the sports field as well as culturally. Their diaries are fully booked with all kinds of activities, which not, is not really bad, but there's no time for play. They believe play is a waste of time. So play time has decreased and structured activity times have increased. And parents and children spend more and more time on their cell phones and computers. And parents do not feel that it is safe for their children to play outdoors anymore. But I think knowledge empowers. So it's important to educate our parents, teachers, curriculum writers, principals, and other role players about the benefits of play-based learning. You can create opportunities where all the role players have access to literature, information sessions, conferences, newsletters, research and statistics. Provide evidence to the role players about the importance of play-based learning. Unfortunately, still at schools, the children are bound to sit at your desk and do worksheets where rote learning takes place in an inflexible curriculum. If the teacher can just intentionally plan and teach play-based learning and concepts, she, as she or he should be conscious and purposeful and mindful in planning activities and assessments. It's very important that the teacher should provide, and the parent should provide changing experiences and that foster high level thinking skills. They themselves can use strategies such as modeling, demonstrating, open questioning, speculating, explaining, and engaging about play. Set the scene. This is very important to provide resources to support play to create an organized, stimulating and safe environment and adopt a playful approach yourself. If I can just add to that, some parents and even teachers feel play-based learning is a chaotic and undisciplined learning environment. But it's not so, it's not true. For example, during structured play, the teacher consciously plan activities to develop and enhance and assess specific skills. For example, problem solving or categorization. During unstructured play, the children have the opportunity to freely explore and investigate their environment, their interests, in a pressure-free, failure-free way. And during this free play or in unstructured play, valuable observations are made. And then the, the role of the teacher and the planning of play-based learning, um, it's not a situation where the teacher goes to school and says, okay, today you can play. Play-based learning should be carefully and mindfully planned. The teacher can, for example, change roles as the situation involves. For example, from creating a play situation to choosing ways to be involved with the children, to draw out the potential learning in a situation by means of challenges or open-ended questions which develop play further. The teacher should be intentional and responsive to children's play. Engage in shared thinking and problem solving to enhance children's thinking and learning. So, Steph, there are ample evidence that effective play-based learning develops mm. cognitive skills. Yes. How, how will parents and teachers know 
that they have effectively implemented play-based learning? What are those signs that they'll see in the children? A happy child with self-confidence, positive self-image, positive social skills, where the child is able to show empathy, sharing. If the child is not afraid of new challenges, to explore and investigate or test ideas, this child has very good language and communication skills, focused attention, good memory, the child asks questions, good self-regulation, metacognition, intrinsic motivation, all these aspects will show a parent or a teacher or a caregiver that this child successfully mastered the play-based learning and cognitive development skills. Steph, you provided a number of uh, play-based learning tools in your blog that we will post on the website, a number of TED Talks that our listeners can also access. Where can our listeners get hold of you? They are more than welcome to email me. I will put my email address on the blog. Or they can phone me by 016-910-3070. And of course, for our international listeners, the dialing code to come into South Africa is plus two seven. And then just take away the zero and the rest of the telephone number stays the same. Steph, if you can leave our listeners with one take-home message, what would that be? If we look at everything that um, what has been said, I think it can no longer be ignored. That play-based learning is a very important pedagogy in early childhood development and education. Well, I can't agree with you more, and I want to join my voice with yours. Let the children play. It is so important for their development and for their success. So thank you so much for your valuable input, and I believe this is going to make a huge positive impact in the lives of many people. Thank you so much. Thank you, dear Pierre. This podcast is produced by the Institute for the Advancement of Cognitive Education. Find us online at www.ilearnthinking.org or on social media at ilearnthinking.org.